Hi, this is Mike from We Build Stuff. This video is part of a series of build logs following the construction of a bar top arcade that uses a 28 inch screen. Follow along for the steps I use and see the process I take when building. Rather than skipping over parts of the build, I will be showing almost every single step, which is why this series has been split into multiple videos. Please check out the playlist link in the description, like, subscribe to show support for this channel. In this video, I will be installing the buttons and joysticks as well as wiring the micro switches to the USB encoders. I'll show the way I securely attach the Raspberry Pi to the arcade cabinet, and I'll also do a quick run through of configuring the controls in the recall box operating system. Lastly, I'll show some gameplay testing for educational purposes. I like this style of hat buttons. They're easy to swap up micro switches and easy to mount to your control panel. These things basically just snap in and out, so if you break one, you can just pop it out and replace it. I think this is a very simple system, but button choice is really a personal preference. So I personally start by putting all the buttons in first and loosely tightening the nuts that hold it together. For this build, you can see that there's just a lone button in the middle. That one is going to act as a hotkey button in Recall Box that allows me to do certain menu or little shortcuts. Things like exiting the game, uh, saving my states, I can even rewind games. It's all built in there. Very easy to use. That is only connected to the first player. The second player hotkey is going to be hidden inside the cabinet and really is only used for when I'm configuring the controls in the first place. I'm using USB encoders for this build because of their simplicity and ease of use. You plug the wires that come with it into your buttons and your joystick directly into the USB encoder and then a USB cable runs from there into whatever you're plugging it into. Whether it's a Raspberry Pi, a PC, uh, you could be using it for a small fight stick, anything you want. These things actually will work with some consoles as well as the Raspberry Pi and PC. I'm going to be making a small little map or kind of a plan to figure out where I want to stick all of, the, all of these and I'm going to try to make sure that player one and player two are set up the exact same. Binary solo. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. Usually these just snap right on. They're pretty simple and easy to use. If you put one on the wrong place, sometimes they can actually be a little bit tricky. If you look carefully at the tab coming out of the micro switch, there's a small hole. That hole lines up with a little tab that kind of grabs it on the end of that uh, quick connector so they're a little bit tricky to get off so make sure you get it right the first time in most kits they will come with maybe one or two extra wires in case but don't count on that with your build you can take the micro switches off the buttons if you choose and just wire them up like that and then snap them in it's really personal preference sometimes it's tricky to get your fingers into those small places Sometimes things come apart. I was lucky enough that I could just pop this one back in. In the past, I've had to rewire and solder things and basically run completely new sets of wires. Uh, I was lucky here I can just snap it back in place and it worked. These things aren't super expensive, hence the build quality. So you can see that I have some basic labels inside. That's just to help me remember. If you wanted to, you could wrap a piece of tape around each wire and label it so that it's easier for you. But I've done so many of these and I really don't need to do that anymore. But if it helps you, do it. Normally, another thing I would probably do is try to find a space where I could, you know, glue down or screw the USB encoder directly to the cabinet. Um, the wires just weren't long enough for this build, so I had to let it float freely but it's not going to be a problem because it's out of the way of anything getting damaged. To hold everything together with my joysticks, I'm using the number 10 by 24 UNC machine bolts and nylock nuts. The nylock nuts have a little plastic retainer inside that helps it stay tight and doesn't loosen, well, too much over time. I wanted it to get nice and flush, so if you remember in a previous video, I countersunk those holes. Just kind of eyeballed it, make it look nice. There's many other ways to do this, this is just the way that I did it for this build. Yeah, Those little snap connectors are nice and easy. Just make sure you have your joystick facing the correct way, whether it's up, down, left, right, 
backwards, forwards, mirrors, just do it the right way. Sometimes you won't know until you plug it into the Raspberry Pi and actually check it, and then you may have to swap wires or flip the thing upside down. The wiring for an arcade is actually really simple if you follow these kind of videos. Uh, if you're doing something like a Pandora box, you may need a JAMA harness uh, or something like that. But really, you just got to find out a way that works. There are so many tutorials online that show you how to do this. This is just the way that I do it. Now, there's a couple ways that you can attach a ball top. If you want, you can use Loctite or Thread Locker. Uh, you put that onto the threads, screw your two pieces together, and they should hold tight. In this case, I'm just quickly uh, tightening it with a locking pliers and tighten it with my, uh, with my hands. I did this just because I wasn't sure if I was going to be making a change later. So now on to a quick test fit. Be careful not to squish your wires when you're putting it all together. This is why sometimes it's a good idea to securely attach your USB encoder directly to maybe your control panel, the underside, things like that. So I'm just doing a quick test. I've put in my finishing washers and screwing in those pieces. Time to attach the screen. Again, be careful not to squish your wires. You'll remember this from the previous video. That was video number three, how I made this little clamping system thing. But it works. This is all made out of scrap pieces of 2x4. Very simple, easy to use, and you can do it with just about any main hand tools at home. You can use a jigsaw or just a manual handsaw, or backsaw, I guess you'd call it. If you look carefully at the bottom right of the screen, there was a small hole underneath it. That was to allow a remote control for the TV to access the infrared sensor that is behind it. It's not too obvious, you don't see it that well. Now while I am bolting it in now, I will be cutting the plexiglass cover for it to eventually, uh, but you just don't see that yet. Again, I just want to get it tested make sure that the gameplay is working. So I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 for this build. Uh, you could use a PC, you could be using an Odroid XU4. There's quite a number of different ways to do this. I chose a Raspberry Pi 3 because at the time this was pretty awesome for the price and it's going to work. These are little plastic standoffs that I'm going to use to mount the Pi to the cabinet. You're going to see that next. There's an IEC power socket, which I'm going to show how to wire. And that switch is going to be used to control the backlighting. And then, of course, a power bar to power everything. So here's a heatsink. Where are you supposed to put it? No. 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 That's much better. And a second one. So I want to put these in here. The supplied plastic screws don't fit, so I need to find a solution. Drill a bigger hole. Just be careful not to destroy your board. Don't drill through your hands. That's a stupid thing. So next I drill a pilot hole before I put the screws into the cabinet. I'm going to make sure I don't go too deep so I don't go through the bottom of the cabinet. So these are just small screws that came with the kit. Plug in my USB encoders and I've left plenty of room to add just about anything. HDMI for the TV. Get everything powered up and we're going to do a quick test. Let's see if it works. Success. So I need a keyboard initially to get set up and navigate through the menu so I can get to the controller settings. First thing it prompts me to do is hold down a button to identify which player I'm going to be configuring. Follow the prompts, press the buttons as needed. Buttons that are not being used, you just hold down any random button until it skips over. Lastly, my hotkey, press OK, and move on to player 2. You can go and configure other inputs afterwards if you want. If you want to assign player 1 or player 2, or switch them back and forth all in the menu. So same deal with player 2. Make sure inputs match player one so that let's say your A button doesn't become a B button on the other side. You want them to be a mirror image of each other. The player two hotkey is on the inside. Click and save. Let's test some games now. So I'm going to start with just some old classics, some games that only use your joystick and two buttons. Things seem to be working. Let's move on to something that has more buttons. So six buttons, here's Street Fighter 2. Quick Hadoukens, that works. All right, take a break from that, and I'm going to install the speakers, because I want to hear the audio. 
Normally I'd be bolting or screwing down my speakers, but in this case, because of their shape, I'm just going to be putting some hot glue on there. Easy to take off if I need it, but still strong enough to hold it so it does not come apart. I probably would have changed up the way I did this if I was to redo this specific project again. I probably would have got a new glue gun as well. This thing was not the best. So I'll do a quick test fit and it's on to do some gameplay testing. So this is probably one of my classic favorite games. So I'll just do a quick test here. I'm not a speedrunner, but I do still enjoy and love this game. A little bit tricky to do with a joystick compared to an analog stick, but I always enjoy the challenge of doing that. The first time I ever actually beat this game was probably on an emulator on my MacBook back in college using just a keyboard. Alright, let's test some other games. Again, stuff that I love playing here is just the fighter games. You're going to be using all six buttons for these. So they're each going to get a quick click, test each of the micro switches, make sure I've wired them correctly, nothing is wrong, and then move on to something else. Now, I find the best way to really test these arcades is to let some of the arcade club students or just some of my other students test it out. If it can handle the abuse of teenagers, that means your arcade is probably built well enough. So in part six, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch more things and pretty much finishing up. That could be the last video, I'm not sure. I'm gonna be adding cooling fans, wiring in my IEC power switch, wiring the LED strip lighting, adding a switch for lighting, cable management, plexiglass screen protector, marquee artwork, final touches and overview. Link will be in the description. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and leave any comments down below. I do my best to answer everybody's questions. Enjoy, have an awesome day.